We are gathered today at a pivotal moment in our shared history. We are nearly two years into the pandemic, and there's been so much loss, lives and livelihoods and a loss of normalcy. But the pandemic has also presented us with an opportunity. The pandemic has shined a light on the long-standing fractures and fissures in our systems and in our structures. And I believe that we have an opportunity now to transform our nation. President, careful, we have. Thank you, Mr. President. Gosh, Mr. President, I wish I didn't have to, to give this give this talk. I think it's a it's a bipartisan observation that uh, unfortunately Americans are paying a lot more for just about everything. I asked my staff to put together some inflation numbers and they're just breathtaking. Uh, gasoline up 50 percent, rental cars up 42.9 percent. You need a used car or truck, they're up 26 percent. A turkey 20.2 percent, bacon 20.2 percent, beef 20.1 percent, pork chops 15.9 percent, bedroom furniture. 12% higher than last year. Eggs, 11.6% up. Televisions, up 10%. Frozen fruits and vegetables, up 7.5%. Chicken, up 8.8%. Shoes, up 8%. Baby food, up 8%. Children's clothes, up 7.6%, and I could keep going. Unbelievable. Now, Mr. President, I believe in calling them like I see them. Um, I think most fair-minded Americans know that President Biden is responsible for this inflation. You, uh, you don't have to be Einstein's cousin to figure that out. But put the politics aside. The shame of all this is that the burden of these price increases are falling on the backs of the American people. And while Washington is obsessed with the politics of it, the American people and the people in my state have to bear the cost. A lot of people, Mr. President, as you well know, just can't afford to pay 50% more to fill up their gas tanks. They can't afford to go to have to stop and go arrange a bank loan to go to the gas station or to the grocery store. And unfortunately for Americans in my state and your state and across the country, here with winter coming on, the cost of heating homes is also going up just in time for temperatures to fall. So the cost of heating is going up and the temperatures are going down. A lot of families are going to have to shell out up to 30% more for natural gas than they did this past year. Ask them if their income went up 30%. Um, as our days grow shorter, the economic landscape, unfortunately, is getting darker. Thanksgiving is just around the corner. It's a cherished American holiday. But even the holiday that Americans observe in order to count our blessings is coming with new hardships. According to the New York Times, Mr. President, Thanksgiving 2021, and I quote, could be the most expensive meal in the history of the holiday. 
as I just mentioned uh, a few seconds ago. Frozen turkey is going to set you back 20% more than it did last year. If you want to enjoy, you, want, you like gravy with your, with your turkey, well, get ready to pay 7% more for gravy. Um, maybe you don't eat meat. Maybe you're a vegan. Well, unfortunately, frozen vegetables are also going to cost you about 7 to 7.5% more. And the high prices only apply if you can find the food in the supermarkets. Some of, the, some of these food products you can't find, you, you can't even find on Google, with Google. There's no guarantee that the cranberry sauce and the sweet potatoes will be in stock come dinner time. Now, this is America. This is 2021. This isn't the Soviet Union 30, 40, 50 years ago. My God. Washington ought to hide its head in a bag. Now, the official general inflation rate is 6.2% higher than it was last October. And that happens to be the largest increase in over 30 years. But we all know, and I can tell you, real people in the real world who go to the grocery store and the clothing store and pay their insurance bill and go try to buy an automobile, know that it is not 6.2%. It is a lot higher. Now, I need to ask a question, though. Are you really surprised? Are you really surprised that prices are rising when the Biden administration is printing money? When the Biden administration is exploding our debt when the Biden administration is forfeiting America's energy independence, when the Biden administration is paying people to watch Netflix instead of to produce the goods we need, when the Biden administration is ignoring gridlock in our supply chain. American people aren't surprised. For months... For months, the White House has turned gaslighting Americans about the inflation crisis into an art form, Madam President. White House officials pretend inflation, if you ask them, oh, it's just temporary. It's just a temporary problem, temporary a rat's rear end. It's actually a soul-crushing, job-killing tax on working Americans. That's what inflation is. Every time you go to the grocery store, your taxes go up. And inflation hits lower income and middle income families the hardest. The hardest. And anyone who doesn't believe that should ask Sec Secretary Kerry whether fuel prices have grounded his private jet. Of course not. He's rich. He's got a private jet. He doesn't feel it. You know who feels it? The moms and dads in this country who get up every day and go to work and obey the law and pay their taxes and try to do the right thing by their kids and try to save a little money for retirement. That's who pays this tax that the economists call inflation. And this, this inflation didn't just appear out of nowhere. I mean, any economist with a pulse knows where this inflation came from. Inflation comes from too much money chasing too few goods. And when you have an administration, as we do with the Biden administration, that spends money like it was gully dirt, whose mantra is we can't, possibly spend enough taxpayer money. There's just enough hour, not enough hours in the day. Of course you're going to have inflation. Of course you're going to have inflation. Now, what's President Biden doing about it? Well, I've noticed 
that the, the, the Biden administration, when it comes to economics and other areas as well, they never make the same mistake twice. They make it five or six times, just to be sure. So how, how's the Biden administration going to deal with this economic cancer of inflation, which, kill, which is killing the American people? Their idea is, let's go, fi let's go pass a spending orgy bill, they call it reconciliation, of epic, epic proportions, chock full, chock full of welfare blowouts when we can't afford the social programs we have now. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And a White House official claimed earlier this week that the president's he calls it 1.75 trillion bill. It's going to end up, we all know, being a lot more than that. He says it'll actually reduce inflation. Right. And those aren't hogs in the hog lot. Just wait. The fact is, and unless you were in the in the quad playing frisbee during Econ 101, you know this is the truth. The fact is that massive government spending has kept workers on the sidelines and has fueled inflation. But the only comfort the permanent Washington types are sending to folks gathered around an historically expensive Thanksgiving table is that more, not less, more of the same, same insane policies are coming down the pipeline through what the president calls the Build Back Better bill. And I think most Americans call the Build Back Broker bill. Have you looked at the bill? I went, I, I, I've looked at the House bill. I've started reading it. I'm probably going to go broke just reading the thing. Now, neo-socialists love this bill. They can love it like the devil loves sin. But the American people aren't going to love it. Louisianians aren't going to love it. Louisianians love their families. And they just want to provide for them. Especially at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. And they can't do it with inflation raging. This Thanksgiving, what many Americans, what most Americans need the most is relief, not just relief from inflation, but relief from bad leadership. Now, I want my friends in the Biden White House to know that I am genuinely interested in working with them to solve America's inflation problem. But you're not going to do it by spending more money. You're not going to do it by throwing gasoline on the fire. The first rule is to do no harm. Do no harm. And by that I mean that my Democratic friends should stop trying to ram this multi-trillion dollar tax and spend bill through Congress. And they should stop it for two reasons. Americans don't want it, and Americans can't afford it. So this Thanksgiving, Madam President, and I hope you have a good one. I hope my Democratic friends will give up on tying millstones around the neck of the American economy. I hope they will give up fueling inflation with another extremist spending orgy bill. And if they would do that, if they would just do that, Americans could sit down to eat next Thursday and give thanks that compassion and common sense have finally prevailed in Washington, D.C., where, frankly, on most issues, common sense is illegal. Madam President, I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.